Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. And today I'm, I'm going to give my observations on a question that I've had from a viewer. Quite a generic question really about uh, now the fact that spring and summer is arriving in the northern hemisphere. Uh, it's uh, interesting to know my views on striped or boating blazers and just my thoughts on blazers in general. And, well, I'm a man who enjoys a blazer. I'm sat here wearing one now. You can tell it's a blazer, contrasting buttons, and pretty standard blazer, really. But when it comes to stripey or boating or rowing blazers, as they're often called, where do I think that sits in the lexicon of the intentionally well-dressed man? Well, as I say, it's a good question and one which merits some sort of research because the striped blazer goes way back. It goes back to, we believe, the Lady Margaret Boating Club or Rowing Club, which was a, a part of the uh, student body in Cambridge University. I believe it was St. John's College, Cambridge University. And in that St. John's College, they had a rowing club. And, and you know, these young men, these strapping chaps who get up to row their, their, their boats on the river, they would need something to keep them warm in the mornings. Uh, so they chose a blazer. Fashions were a lot more formal back then, as we all know. So they'd all get thick woolen blazers and they'd wear them whilst they were doing their rowing practice in the mornings. Now, as teams often do, they dress in the same outfits becomes a uniform, doesn't it? And that particular group, they all chose very vivid red as the colour of blazer that they wore. They weren't called blazers then, of course. They were just called coats. And because they were so vivid and red and vibrant in colour, they became known as blazing red. And hence, they became known as blazers. Now, there is another counter argument that the term blazer refers to um, the off-duty clothing which people, uh, sailors used to wear on HMS blazer. And because these chaps who were members of the crew always wore the same coloured coats, they were known as blazers. One way or the other, we know that that's where the story originated from. But the reason why people wear stripy blazers when they're rowing and uh, they're sort of participating in sporting activity is so that they can be readily identified as a member of that body, as an affiliate with that group, be it a rowing group or whatever it may be. And, you know, it became the uniform. And as time went on, you know, people uh, who are very much attached to those sporting entities, they like to dress like their heroes, like the athletes who are participating. And they choose to wear you know, jackets, uh, which mirror those of the players. So you would see people not involved in rowing, but interested in it or supporters wearing the colors of their team, of their club. And hence that's how the stripy or rowing blazer became very popular in the sartorial style of people initially here in the UK. They're less popular today, that is fair to say, because they're so vibrant. There's a lot going on normally with the stripy sort of uh, vivid colors in most rowing blazers or boating blazers. They're not something that you could easily wear in day-to-day -day attire because they make you, uh, they're very flamboyant. You definitely stand out from the crowd. And a lot of people choose not to go down that route. They don't want to be seen as somewhat eccentric or, you know, a sort of outlandish dresser. So this is why, you know, they're less popular today. But I think the stripy jacket blazer is, yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't own one, but if you have the opportunity to add one into your collection and you've got the situations in your life where you could wear them to, so slightly less formal events, maybe you're going to, you know, uh, revival events like Goodwood here in the UK, or if you are a boating enthusiast and you are affiliated to a rowing club, definitely go for the blazer associated with that entity uh, and enjoy it because those colors they definitely make you stand out and they give you that opportunity to to demonstrate your personality and a bit of your style and your love and affection for whatever group or body that you're wearing that sporting blazer in uh, you know support of the only thing you have to be a little bit careful of 
It's a bit like a, a club tie or a regimental tie. If you buy a boating blazer because you see one in a thrift store and you just like the look of it, so you buy it and you wear it, that's absolutely fine. But do a little bit of research to find out if it is affiliated to a local rowing club or something like that, because the last thing you want is some chap coming up to you in the street and shaking your hand and congratulating you for being a member of the same club. Um, so just a little bit of consciousness as to where that where that uh, blazer comes from but I think it is a great vibrant statement of style and colour and in the right circumstances can really inject something into the intentionally well-dressed man's outfit. Think of it as sort of smart casual and you won't go far wrong with that. Um, yeah, so there we go. That's my thoughts on the, the blazer really. I mean, um, when it comes to materials, most blazers I own, 100% wool, this one, tends to be, you know, um, natural fibres. You'll get wool, you could get other materials, blends as well. Stay away from your polyesters if you want a nice bit of quality. And yeah, you know, your merinos and things like that, they make a lovely practical garment as well. Don't forget your blazer, being a boating blazer, or a standard navy blazer like I'm wearing now, one of the most versatile items in your wardrobe. You can wear it as I am today, with chinos, or you can wear it with grey flannel slacks, and it gives you a totally different look on each occasion. With chinos, casual. You could wear it, you know, just out and about. Don't even need to wear a tie, quite casual. However, if you're going to a smart event, and you've got, say, grey flannel slacks on, throw on a tie, you're virtually at the same level of formality as wearing a suit because the blazer has this wonderful ability to straddle the, the style levels and turn an item which could be worn smartly into something which can be worn quite casually too. Well worth having in your collection. Just a simple navy blazer, let alone a rowing blazer or something like that. And when it comes to uh, what styles to go for, single-breasted or double-breasted, again, totally dependent on the level of formality you're looking for. Single-breasted is certainly more sporty, that's the way the blazer's intended, and yeah, you know, you can wear that more casually. If it's double-breasted, you've pretty much always got to have it done up when you're standing up or moving around, much more formal. It limits the flexibility of the garment in my mind. So if you're buying that blazer with the intention of wearing it maybe in place of a suit, you know, in quite formal situations, double-breasted is fine, but single-breasted if you want it as a much more flexible outfit. So there we go. That's my thoughts on the good old blazer and particularly the rowing blazer. Certainly something worth thinking of adding to the collection, but just be careful in the situations in which you wear it and the provenance of the colours and the stripes on that blazer itself. Don't let the blazer embarrass you. So, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, click the old subscribe button. If you'd like to contribute to the conversation, drop your comments in the comments section. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or you can join my Patreon group where you'll get additional videos as well. And you'll find out all about how to do that in the show notes below. So until the next time, wear your blazer in any situation and you will be perfectly dressed. Till then, take care and I will see you again very soon.